All right. We are going to talk about order of operations, which we lovingly call GEMDAS, which is really just, okay, I have a problem that has a lot of different operations. It has some addition. It has some multiplication. It has some exponents. How do I solve it so that I'm getting the same number, the same answer as the person next to me and the person across the room and the person across the country who's doing the same problem? Well, to do that, we're all going to follow the same set of rules, and that is the order in which we do these operations. Okay, let's take a look. Um, let's go ahead and say 4 plus 2 times 6. How do I decide which one I do first? If I do the 4 plus 2 first and someone else does the 2 times 6 first, we're going to get two different answers. So in order to always get the same consistent answer as everybody else who's getting it, we have to follow some rules. Our rules, like we talked about in class, we call GEMDAS. And I like to write it out like this. Okay, what does that G stand for? It stands for groupings. Do you see any grouping symbols in this problem? No. Do you see any E, exponents? Nope. So it's okay if you don't have everything in there. We're just going through the list and seeing what to solve first. Multiplying and dividing. Do you see any multiplication or any division symbols in here? Why, yes, I do. I see a multiplication symbol. Okay, that showed up before my addition symbol, so I'm going to do this one first. 4 plus 2 times 6 is how much? 2 times 6 is 12. Okay. Now I'd go back and check. Because sometimes there's going to be more than one multiplying or dividing symbol in there. I'm going back. Do I see any multiplying symbols? No. Do I see any dividing symbols? No. Okay, now I can go down to my next level because I know that I've done every single multiplication or division problem. Do I see any adding or subtracting symbols? Yes. Now I can do those. I should not do them first unless they're inside grouping symbols, but they weren't. So I'm doing them last. 4 plus 12 is... 16, and that is my final answer to that whole expression up there. Okay, let's try one with a few more symbols and operations thrown in there. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to put one with every single thing in there. Uh, let's see. 2 times the 7 plus 3 divided by 5 plus... 9 minus 3 to the power of 2. Okay, whew, got a lot of stuff in there. Where do I start? Well, I start with G, my groupings. Groupings can be parentheses, they can be brackets, or they can be braces. In the next example, we'll look at one that has more than one grouping in there and decide where to start. But right here, I'm going for my grouping. 7 plus 3, how much is that? Yes, it is. It is 10. I know it's a lot to rewrite, but I promise you, it's the only way to stay organized. Do not start solving a little bit of the problem off to the left and a little bit off on the top of your paper and some of it else on a different sheet of paper. Rewrite the whole thing so that you can stay organized and you don't make a silly mistake like, oops, I just suddenly forgot about part of the equation. Okay. We have gotten rid of all of our groupings. You might say, wait a minute, there's still parentheses right here. Yes, but there's only one number inside, and I'm going to leave them there because if I rewrote it like this, you would suddenly think that number was 210 instead of 2 times 10. So I'm going to leave my parentheses there, but I've figured out everything inside the grouping, so I'm good. Next up. E stands for exponents. Do I have an exponent? No, 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 no. Ooh, right there. Exponents come next. What is this? Remember, it is absolutely not 3 times 2. It is the base times itself 2 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Rewrite. 2 times 10 divided by 5 plus 9 minus 9. Okay, next up. Multiplication and division are best friends. They cannot be separated. They are the same step. Okay, wait. I have multiplying here and dividing here. How on earth do I decide which one to do first? Well, you go from left to right. Left to right. Whatever you see first, that's what you're going to do. Oop, I read this problem and I see multiplication first. 
Today, in this problem, I'm doing multiplying first. If it was rewritten and I saw dividing first, I would do that one first. It all depends on your problem. 2 times 10 is 20, divided by 5, plus 9, minus 9. Okay. I did my multiplying and dividing. Am I ready to move on? Nope, not yet. There's still multiplying and dividing in this problem. So I'm going to go back and do it again. 20 divided by 5 is 4, plus 9, minus 9. Only after I have done every single multiplication and division step can I move on. Last step, addition and subtraction. Just like multiplication and division, addition and subtraction are BFFs, and we cannot split them apart. They are on the same step, and I have addition and subtraction. So what do I do? Which one comes first? Well, whichever one goes left to right. Starting at the left at the beginning of my problem, as I read, I read 4 plus 9. Pause. I'm going to do that. 4 plus 9 is 13. Rewrite. Okay, go back. Next time. Doing this step again, addition and subtraction. Starting at the beginning of the problem, 3, I mean, sorry, 13 minus 9. Oops, that's what I see. That's what I'm going to do. 13 minus 9 is 4. There are no more steps to do. I'm down to one single number, and that is my answer. Okay, as promised, here's what you do if you have more than one grouping in a problem. If you have more than one grouping in a problem like this, 4 plus 2 minus 8 plus 3, then you just solve this grouping, and you solve this grouping, and you say 6 minus... Nope, that's not 12. Never mind. Hold on. Ooh, brain fart. 6 minus 11. And then you'd go ahead and say, well, my answer is negative 5. But what happens if you have groupings inside other groupings? Okay. So, what order of operations do we follow? Ooh. We follow GEMDAS. Groupings first. Well, which one? Okay, let's take a look at this grouping. 3 plus 4 times the quantity of 8 minus 3. If I were to write that off to the side, I could take it out of its grouping symbols because I, I got rid of this part. Wait, there's still a grouping here. So we have to solve this one, this 8 minus 3, first. When we have groupings inside of groupings, you want to do the innermost one, the one that's on the most inside grouping first, and work your way out. Okay, so rewriting. We have 3 plus 4 times, what's 8 minus 3? That is 5 plus 2. We can't move on to the exponent step because we still have a grouping, this whole thing. So I'm going to go do some more groupings. 3 plus 4 times 5. Notice that I'm following all of GEMDAS inside my brackets. I did groupings first, then I'm going to do multiplication, last I'll do addition. You follow GEMDAS no matter what. If you're working part of the problem, you follow GEMDAS. If you're working the entire problem, you follow GEMDAS. You always follow GEMDAS. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 2. Still working that groupings, I need to make sure there's only one number inside. 3 plus 20 is 23 plus 2. Okay, now that there's only one number, I could leave the brackets or I could take them off. But 23 plus 2 equals 25. So that is my answer to the whole problem. So when you have groupings inside of groupings, you want to start at the innermost groupings, follow GEMDAS, work your way till there's only one number inside your outer groupings, and then solve the rest of the problem. That is our recap on order of operations and how to solve using GEMDAS.